As of June 2021, according to Bain & Company, there is $1 trillion of dry powder from buyout funds and $3.3 trillion of dry powder from the private equity industry as a whole, including other alternatives. Dry powder is money that is raised, but not yet spent. In this video, we will answer the question, why is so much money being raised in private equity? We will talk about investors' appetite for private equity. Then we'll talk about the growth dilemma, and we will talk about the value of management fees versus performance fees. And we'll end the video with a final thought. So let's get started by talking about investors' appetite for private equity. Well, pensions, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, family offices, and select high net worth individuals have been increasing their allocation to private equity. One can argue when adding private equity to your portfolio, it can help you increase your return and diversify your risk. We went into more detail on why investors are adding private equity to their portfolios in our video titled, Why Private Equity? So please check that out for more details. Now, when investors have the appetite for private equity, this can create the growth dilemma for private equity firms. Let me walk you through the growth dilemma. Let's say a new private equity firm is raising their first private equity fund. The private equity firm could be started by two people who have left a big private equity firm or a big pension to start their own fund. It could be started by senior and junior investment bankers looking to start a fund. It could be started by an ex-CEO and a private investor looking to start a fund. Or really, anybody else that has the ability to raise a private equity fund. Regardless of who's running it, Let's say the new private equity firm raises its first fund at $300 million. Now, let's assume that the fund does really well and returns an IRR of 50% to its investors. Well, usually the next step for the private equity firm would be to raise a second fund. Well, because of the successful first fund, many of the existing investors who have earned a 50% IRR on the first fund will want to invest in the second fund. On top of that, many new investors will probably be interested in investing in the second fund as well. After all, the private equity firm has a track record. Some investors have restrictions around investing in first-time funds, and these investors like funds with good track records. So, what usually ends up happening is that the private equity firm can raise a lot bigger fund this second time around. Now, let's say based on the new demand, the private equity firm can raise $1 billion for its second fund. Well, the question is, should the private equity firm raise its second fund at a $1 billion? Well, for most private equity firms, the answer usually ends up being yes. But here's the challenge. Earning a 50% IRR on $1 billion is a lot harder than earning a 50% IRR on $300 million. In addition, the team at the private equity firm has had success in smaller deals and may not have the same expertise needed to create value in larger deals. So the private equity firm has the dilemma of whether or not to raise the second fund at a large amount, such as $1 billion. Well, one thing that usually drives the decision to raise a large second fund or follow-on fund is the value of management fees versus performance fees. As discussed in our previous video, how do private equity firms make money? Private equity firms make money through two sets of fees, management fees and performance fees. Now, think of this from an investor's perspective. Management fees are recurring sources of revenue for the private equity firm. And performance fees are non-recurring sources of revenue for the private equity firm. As an investor, what's more valuable? Recurring revenue 
or non-recurring revenue. Think of it for a second. Well, recurring revenue is more valuable because it's more predictable. This is the same reason why valuations for SaaS companies, software as a service companies that primarily earn recurring revenue, are a lot higher than valuations of consulting companies that primarily earn non-recurring revenue. So for private equity firms, there is a temptation to gather assets, or in our example, raise a large second fund, because it will maximize recurring management fees, or in other words, the recurring revenue for the private equity firm. So if the private equity firm raises $1 billion for its second fund, even if it generates an IRR that is less than the IRR for the first fund, the revenue to the private equity firm can still be higher because of the large amount of capital raised. But more importantly, even if the overall revenue for the private equity firm is the same between the smaller first fund and the larger second fund, the value of the revenue is actually higher since $1 of management fees is worth more than $1 of performance fees. Now, here's a final thought. Private equity firms have been raising quite a lot of capital. Now, sometimes private equity firms raise larger funds because they have the experience to do so. And sometimes it's to gather assets and maximize management fees. In this environment with so much capital going to private equity funds, investors, you should spend extra time asking the right questions and doing your due diligence to make sure that you're investing in a value creator, not an asset gatherer. In this video, we answered the question, why is so much money being raised in private equity? We talked about the investor's appetite for private equity. And then we talked about the growth dilemma. And finally, we talked about the value of management fees versus performance fees. If you have thoughts on this video, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like and subscribe buttons. And in the description below, you'll find links to our unique private equity newsletter that provides exclusive commentary on recent private equity deals, as well as our website and our LinkedIn page, where you can find more information on many private equity topics. Thanks. And we'll see you in our next video.